Dr. Payan. Alright, thanks for watching. And in a previous video, I asked you, what does it mean if there's a pivot in every row? Today, we will see what happens if there's a pivot in every column. And it has to do with linear dependence. So, the question is, for which h, h is the following set, 1, 5, minus 3, minus 2, minus 9, 6, and 3, h, minus 9, linearly dependent. And what linear dependence means, it means there's some relationship between those two, three vectors. And be careful, relationship doesn't mean that the first vector can be written in terms of the other two. It could really mean one of those vectors can be written in terms of the others. And to write this more compactly is the following, are there A, B, C, such that, so A, B, C, not all zero, so very important, such that A times the first vector plus B times the second vector and C times the third vector equals to the zero vector. So it's a compact way of writing there's some relationship between the vectors. And notice, in terms of systems, all this means is simply does the following system, 1, 5, minus 3, minus 2, minus 9, 6, and 3h, minus 9, and 0, 0, 0, have put some space, a uh, something solution. Okay. This system always has one solution because you can always let A, B, and C be zero, and that's fine. So uh, things of the form AX equals to zero always has a solution. The question is really, does this have a non-zero solution? Now, um, what do I want to say? Again, here is a stupid way of doing it and a smart <laughs> way. So the stupid way is actually solving the system. We don't have to do that. We just need to figure out if it has a non-zero solution. So let's take this and row reduce. So let's, for example, add minus five times. So in other words, let's subtract the first row from the second row. And also here, we have a simplification. You can factor out minus three if you want. And you get one minus two, three. And notice, ax equals to zero is so easy. You don't have to worry about the right-hand side. That's right, they're happier systems. So, and then five minus five is zero. Nine plus 10 is one. And then h minus 15 and zero, and then this becomes just one minus two, three, and zero. And then one thing you can do, you can subtract. And we can do one minus two, three, zero, and then zero, one, h minus 50, zero, and then, well, in fact, those are just zero. So zero, 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 zero. Nice. Very nice. Okay, now it turns out, I realized, we didn't even have to put the zero, zero, zero. Let's just work with this coefficient matrix. So, just look at one minus two, three, zero, one, h minus 15, and then zero, 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 zero. What are the pivots? There are two pivots here. And in particular, we don't have a pivot in every column. So not a pivot in every column. 
And it turns out, if there's not a pivot in every column, technically it means that the columns are linearly dependent. Why is that? Because, look at this picture, I guess, look at this matrix again. As I said, we don't need to figure out what the solution is, we just need to know if it has a non-zero solution. So, in particular, uh, because the pivots are here, interestingly, no matter what the value of h is, this third column will always be a free variable column. And because this system will have a free variable, it automatically means it has infinitely many solutions. Because it has at least one solution, the zero vector, so it either has one solution or infinitely many, but because they're free variables, it must have infinitely many solutions. In particular, it must have a non-zero solution. And this means that the vectors are linearly dependent. So the answer is then for all h. Interestingly, for all h, this has a solution. Uh, I mean, for all h, this is linearly dependent. And let me sort of summarize that by what's called the column theorem. So if there's a pivot in every column of the coefficient matrix, that's the same, it implies also that columns are A of A are linearly independent. That's because if there's a pivot in every column, um, there are no free variables, so Ax equals to zero must have just the trivial solution. And by what I just said, it also means that Ax equals to zero implies x equals to zero. Wait, Payan, you stress seriously for OH that this right here will be linearly dependent? Doesn't... I yeah. know, it's very surprising, wow. but let me show you. So... What if H is one, for example, like... Okay, let me show you. So the question is, first of all, those two vectors, they're not, uh, well, they're not multiples of each other. They're not. So already it's like linearly independent, if they you are. want. Yeah. So the question is really, is, is this vector in the span of the other two vectors? Yeah. Okay, let's do it with the case H equals to one. Yeah. And it gives you a very surprising answer, by the question is, let's do it with H equals to one. Is the vector three, one minus nine in the span of the other two vectors. One, five, minus three, and minus two, minus nine, six. And in fact, let's try to find A and B, such that A times one, five, minus three, plus B times minus two, minus nine, six, equals three, one, minus nine. One little remark. So technically the question is, are there A and B such that this is true? Yeah. So uh, technically we don't have to solve the system. We just need to check if there's a pivot in every row of this matrix. But just for sake of completeness, let's try to solve it. So if we do one five minus three, and then minus two minus nine six, and then three one minus nine, the good thing is, we've already done that. So we already had this, but with h equals 1. Ah, okay? okay? So this gives you 1 minus 2, 3. Sorry. 1 minus 2, 3. And then 0, 1 minus 14. Because h is 1. Yes. Okay. okay? And let's continue. So let's do reduced row echelon form. So times minus 2. And it gives you, so, uh, I guess times, times two, two. Yeah, times two, and then one, zero, and then, so minus 28 plus three, that's minus 25, and then zero, one, minus 14, and zero, zero, zero. So it turns out, back substituting, A 
is minus 25 and b is minus 14. So 3, 1 minus 9 is minus 25. Wow. Times this vector plus minus wow. 14. I think it's very impressive. Who would have guessed that? Right. Yeah. And you can check that this is correct. And by the way, yeah. is that the only pair of A and B that will make this work? In this case, yes, because there are no free variables. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So interestingly, here there are no free variables, so there's just a unique solution. Yeah, okay. But in general, well, in the previous thing, there was a free variable, so generally there are infinitely many solutions to this question. Okay. But interestingly cool. here, there's just wow. a unique solution. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yay! 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 All okay. right. Yay. <laughs> yeah.